All right. We are ready to go. In the studio, we have Billy Davis and Wayne. How you doing, Billy? Can you hear me? Oh, I hear you very good. Yeah. How are we doing? I'm doing fine. Perfect. Perfect. Everything's a get-go. So you're going to give us some uh, really great music for about the next hour, approximately. Um, why don't we get started, since we're running a little bit behind? What uh, song do you have for us right now? Right now, a song called uh, Crossroads, uh, written about a big blues man back in the day named Robert Johnson. Cool. All but right. It, but it's not his song. I wrote it about him. Ah, <laughs> excellent. Gotcha. Okay, let's go. Sex 
Sexy women, fortune, and fame. I ain't been down there yet, but I ain't rooted out either. WHFR.FM, the station making waves, live from Studio J. And when we say live, we really mean live. So, I didn't get the, the full name of the person that's playing with you today, Billy. Who do we have? Uh, oh. I got a Wayne Craycraft. Okay. And he's playing the, uh, I can't see from here, so you'll have to get me a little <laughs> educated. I'm short, so it's like, okay. I'm rhythm. <laughs> rhythm, okay. I just wanted to clarify that. Rhythm section. Yeah, cool. So it's just the duo today. Uh, I wanted to ask you, I know we, we don't have all day with it. Uh, you've been in the background most of your life. You've played on, on so many songs, too numerous to mention. You've never really been in the forefront. You've been on my show more than once, but you've always been in the background. I just wanted to ask you if you could uh, tell us, you know, in a short bit of time. Why now? Why suddenly want to be up front? I tell you that why, because all the people that I played with before are no longer around. <laughs> <laughs> so if you want to continue playing, you got to do it up front. <laughs> right. Because there was a time that I would needed a gig or something like I get on the phone call with Jackie Wilson, James Brown, or Hank Ballard. The cat, you know, they, they, were, they were still here, but when they left, I said, well, I got to go it on my own now. I can't call nobody for no gig now. <laughs> yeah, if you want to keep going, you got to do it yourself. Huh? Yeah. So that's, that's really exciting. You're actually going to be uh, in the forefront now. Um, you're going to be doing your own tour, including Europe. Is that correct? Well, I don't, I don't really know. I hope so. <laughs> okay. Um, you have a couple I, of... Uh, Go ahead. I'm sorry. I've been, I've been I've been over there before. You know, South America, even even you know Japan and play, you know China. Right, right. It's been years ago though, but uh, it's just one of those amazing things. You've done so much over the years, and yet the average person, you if they said your name, most people would like, okay, who's Billy Davis? You know that kind of thing. Right. So it's kind of odd, you know. Um, but uh, you have a a show coming up. I heard a festival. Uh, yeah, and uh, well, Wayne, you know more about that than I do. No? Uh, yeah, that's in Lake City, and I believe it starts tomorrow. We're leaving tomorrow, so, and it runs through the weekend, and I guess people camp out there. Okay. It's, uh, it's not just blues, though. They feature any kind of music. Okay. So, so it's a multi-genre festival? Then? Yes, yes. Okay. Well, that's cool. All right, so... I imagine we're going to hear a lot of great things about you, Billy, in the upcoming months. I uh, hope so. Looking forward to it. Yeah. Okay. What do you have for us now, sir? Well, since, uh, like I said, I just did uh, uh, an air, uh, uh, a vinyl coming out uh, very shortly. Uh-huh. I did a lot of, uh, I did some very classic, uh, what I call blues, because I'm in, into the blues challenge, and I see, well, if they want blues, I just give them blues, you know. Right, right. So basically, that's what I'll be doing today, basically. Okay. All right. And the next song I got is a song I, uh, I written about uh, my own life, uh, walking down the street, and I felt a certain way, and I saw a piece of, so a pen in the piece of paper laying found on the sidewalk, and I wrote these lyrics. Okay. And the name of the track? It's called Trouble Shoes. Okay.
somebody locked up the sky a thousand times I paid my dues another track that's going to appear on the brand new release oh yeah okay is this a full length mm, yeah okay 
So full length release. Is it going to be available just on CD? Is it going to be available on vinyl? CD and uh, vinyl. Okay, great. I just don't know exactly when. Ah, <laughs> so still in, still pending, huh? Right. All right. Any idea, time frame at all in ballpark or? Somewhere about the end of the month at least, I think. Okay, so not too far away. Right. All right, and when it does come out, how, what's the best way to get that? Mm, well, 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 Laura would know more about that than me. <laughs> okay, we, we have to find out for our listeners if yeah. they're interested in purchasing. Like, can they find it in stores, or do they have to just go to your, the website? You have a website or any kind of place that they go to uh, get a hold of that? Or uh, Well, I got a website, but uh, I don't know how how. <laughs> Laura knows more about that more about that than I do. I really don't know. All right, let's see. I got just got handed something. Jet plastic. Oh, it's you, the release is going to be on jet plastic. Right. Ah, our young protege. Kid's barely uh, in college, and he's already done lots of amazing things for local talent. His record label. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. So I, uh, I have a. A good feeling. Yes, it is going to be available soon. If it's jet plastic, then yeah. I'm almost positive it'll be available in stores. It's that kind of label. It won't be just like online or anything like that. People will be able to go to their uh, local mom and pop and purchase that if they do desire. So that's great news. Okay. Yeah, I'm very, f I haven't met the young man, but I'm very familiar with the label and I know he's doing a lot of great things. Yeah, he's a very, very, I have a lot of respect for him. He's a very, mm -hmm. very smart young man. Yeah, kind of like a child protege. And right, I have a great deal of respect for him. And he's into a lot of different uh, styles and genres. He's not like pigeonholed into one type, you know. He's right. he, he likes new, newer stuff, he likes older stuff, and everything in between. So that's what makes a, a good label, where you don't put all your eggs in one basket, so to speak. All right, so any other shows besides that festival this weekend coming up, or...? That's all that I know of right now. As of uh, the current situation. Okay. Well, why don't we keep it going? What do we have now, Mr. Davis? This is a song that's totally uh, different than uh, what I'm, people are accustomed to see me doing, but another realistic story, though. I never, ever told you that I love you Although I've had so many times to tell you so But instead I've carried all this heavy load Cause I didn't, I didn't want you to know Oh yeah Your family and me were the best of friends And if they knew how I felt about you Friendship would end. I'm afraid it would. So for years I've walked around with this heavy load. Cause I didn't, I never wanted no. I saw you years ago Just have a friend But 
today I love you all and to the end ain't it funny It's so funny how feelings change. It's so funny. Oh, it's funny. It's so funny. It's so strange how feelings change through the years. All right, you're listening to WHFR.FM, the station making waves. Live from Studio J, and we have the Billy Davis duo doing a live set for us, some great blues, something we'll be doing all uh, through the month of September. Next week, we have the Ray Khan Tribute Band, and on the last Thursday of the month, we have Sweet Willie T coming in, so it's a treat for you all through the month of September, the great blues music, today being no exception. So... By uh, guesstimate, how many years have you been doing this, Mr. Davis? Oh, a long time. <laughs> I, I started playing, learning how to play when I was 16 years old. Okay. And that was in 1954. All right. We're, who were some of your favorites back then when you first started? Well, what really got me interested in guitar in the first place was Arthur Big Boy Crudup. Okay. Uh, where's he from? I'm not familiar, so educate me a tiny bit. Oh, he's from uh, he's from Mississippi. Okay. He did a record called uh, "That's All Right Now, Mama." <clears throat> oh, okay. Was that his original song or was yeah. it a cover? Yeah, he, he he wrote it. Okay, I'm familiar. Wow. I, I was riding in a taxi with my mother one day, and I heard it playing on the radio, and I was I, was, I never forgot the sound of that. I wanted heard him plucking the guitar and singing. I said, "Oh my goodness, that's what I want to do." I was a little kid. At the time, <laughs> And I never forgot it. Now it was years later I found out who the guy, who he were. Did you ever get to play with him? No, I never did. Never met him. Oh, that's too bad. But another one of my eyes was uh, well, the, the no one that stood out above all of them was BB King. Oh yeah. And he became a very good friend of mine, and uh, mm-hmm. and his, his, he, he, he was he was one of the biggest influences on me. Right. Yeah. It was really nice that he got his due towards the end of his life. He was able to enjoy a really great career, and even the masses knew who he was, not just people into the blues, but people in general. You know, he could pack places, and, you know, again, he, he got his due, you know, for all the years he put in. So that's wonderful. Hopefully the same thing will happen to you, Mr. Davis. Uh, well, I'm out here doing it, trying to still, still doing it after all these years. <laughs> And I, you know, I just 
just just feed I can see it done until I can't do it. Say uh, you'll still be playing that last note right before they close the coffin, right? Oh, I got that right. <laughs> I'm gonna be trying. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay. All right. Uh, why don't we keep it going? I'm sure you got at least three or four more songs in you, if not more, right? Oh yeah. Okay. What do we got now, Miss? This song done by one of my influ- early influencer guy. I used to listen at right here in Detroit. His name was uh. Baby Boy Warren, he never really made it big, but he, I, I, I loved it. I used to sneak to bars and stand outside. I was too young to get in. Right. But I'd stand outside and listen, and, and, and every time someone come out, I'd get a chance to peek and see him on stage. <laughs> Got a little glib, so. Huh? Right. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, so this song was written by him. What's it called? Santa Fe. Santa Fe, all right. Thank you. 
Santa Fe. What's the story behind that song? Anything in particular? Or? Well, that was a very popular uh, train route when I was growing up. Now we only got Amtrak, but Santa Fe was, you see it, I used to see it a lot in, uh, when I lived in Memphis, Tennessee. I lived right across the street from a big uh, railroad yard over there, and I used to see that, see that a lot, Santa Fe, New Mexico. Okay. So it's uh, got got some memories, huh? Yeah, very popular train route at the time. Okay, did you just know of it? Did you travel it? What's you know? I, I I never never travel on the on the train itself, but I traveled that 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 route many times. Okay, all right. Going out to New Mexico and Arizona and California. I never... Oh, we went out west like oh, that. Yeah. Oh, okay, gotcha. So, have you basically been a Detroiter all your life, or where did you start? Uh, out? I came to Detroit when I was 13. Okay. I was born in Bentonio, Mississippi. Okay. But, you know, relatively speaking, I guess 13 years out of, you know, how long you've been around is kind of minute, really, now. I mean, I'm sure you remember those first few years quite fondly and quite vividly, but you know what I'm saying. Oh, yeah. You could definitely call yourself a Detroiter. You've been here long enough. <laughs> well, I'd say I'd never, well, I, I knew when I was growing up, I used to go back down to visit, and the people would be surprised, said, Billy, so you still talk the same way you did when you were in here, you know? Because <laughs> most people came up, up to Northern State, they changed the, everything, you know, but I went back and the kids were surprised, said, boy, you, so you sound just like you did before you left, so. My father was like that. He grew up in the sticks in West Virginia and Tennessee, and he never lost his accent. Yeah, I never did either. You could tell that he was from down south. Then you have other people that, you know, move away, and then they come back, and it's like, you talk funny, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I never will forget when I was in elementary school, uh, the girls used to come around me, like, dun, dun, uh, we'd be outside in the gym. A bunch of pretty girls would come around and surround me, and, I, and I'm thinking they like me. You know, be, but they wanted to hear me talk. <laughs> <laughs> they were fascinated by your dialect. Right. They got, and I, then I got hip to that. I said, oh, that's what they want me to do. Ah. You know, I'm thinking they come over there because they like me. You know, but, They're using you, huh? Yeah, right. They was, that's, so I never, did, I never did lose that accent. Still got it. Yeah, the, the, it's what's called roots, right? Right. That's for sure. Can't, can never get rid of them completely. All right, uh, let's keep it going. Let me see what I got here. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, trying, you're the leader. Uh, I'm trying to think what. The, I don't you got know, the kings. I, I, I've written so many songs that sometimes I don't know. You got the kings. Oh yeah. If you want to do that one, that's. Oh. Yeah. Oh, excuse me. Kings of Rock and Roll, right? Yes, oh, yeah. sir. <laughs> the Kings of Rock and Roll are gone, but their memory lingers on. Just keeps on moving on Said now the king, the rock and roll are gone Tell y'all the music lingers on 
just keeps on growing strong Elvis Presley had us all shook up Way down in a Memphis, Tennessee And from Ferdy, Louisiana Came good rock and Jerry Lee Midnighters, we had a sound you just couldn't miss, and we had the whole world of dancing to a song that they called the twist. But the kings of rock and roll are gone, but their memories lingers on, and their music. Just keeps on growing strong Tell y'all the kings of rock and roll are gone But their memory lingers on And their music, let me tell you Just keeps on growing on
And the music, let me tell you, just keeps on growing strong. I can't go rock and roll or cold, but the memories linger on. And the music, let me tell you, just keeps on going on. Just keeps on moving on. Oh, yeah. This is WHFR.FM, the station making waves live from Studio J. Every Thursdays from 5 to 6 o'clock. Some great live music for your listening pleasure. Today being no exception. Got some great blues from a gentleman named Billy Davis. No stranger to music. He's been doing it forever. He's got a lot of uh, credit under his belt. Um, what, uh, what would you say was your busiest era as far as actually playing on recordings, that kind of thing? Uh, with Hank Ballard and the Midnighters. Okay. That was in the uh, late 50s up into, into the mid-60s. Okay. That was your busiest time. but Busiest time, right. But you've always kept busy doing something, no matter what era we pick, right? Yeah, basically, because I, when I wouldn't... I recorded with a lot of other people other than... The, but that, that's why I did most of my recording with Hank Ballard, but I recorded with Jack and Wilson, the Isley Brothers, uh, the Drifters, and uh, Ben E. King. Mm-hmm. And I heard you had a hand in like helping out Hendrix back in the day? Oh, yeah, I met him when he was 16 years old. We were playing at the Eagle Auditorium in uh, in uh, Seattle, and he came to the show. He was 16 years old at the time, and he came. He wanted to. He saw one of the guys in the band. We was in the back taking an intermission. He saw one of the guys in the band, and he approached him, and Ed told him he wanted to meet the guitar player, which, which just happened to be me. Oh, wow. And after about three, three attempts to... To, to meet me, you know, I, I finally agreed because I didn't know who he was. He was just a kid, you know, and I was, mm-hmm. I was back there looking at the at the beautiful young ladies back then at, at the time. I, <laughs> you know, I didn't want to have no, didn't have no desire to meet a guy. Yeah, you're still young enough. That wasn't <laughs> on your list. Yeah, but after I met him, we become really, really, I really saw he was a beautiful person, human being, and I really liked him. And uh, okay, and that's where our friendship started, and it lasted up until he. Uh, you know, left us in 1970. Right. It's a shame. I always think about what he could have accomplished if he was still around today, you know, at the rate he was going. Oh, yeah. He had a lot of a lot of plans in mind, you know. He wanted yeah. To... More than just simply playing guitar, but exploring. I, I once heard an interview, I don't know if it was correct, but his, one of his goals, he says, I want to do what John Coltrane does, but on the guitar. Right. That was one of the things that it was one of his goals. He never got yeah. to do it, but that was one of them, you know, and I'm right. like, wow. Exactly, right. That would have been killer. He wanted to play, he wanted to get a big, he, he was tired of the three-piece group, too. Yeah, I understand he, yeah, that. Yeah, he wanted to get a bigger band. That was just too limiting for him. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, we got time for one more. Let's do one more, and what do we have? Ew, what have we got here? As long as I've been playing, I got to think about it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you come up with something, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Robert Johnson and Charlie Patton had them. And old Sun House had them too. All oh, so did Johnny Shines and a cat named Lou Joe Blue. They all had the same affliction, they all had those Mississippi blues. Yes, they did. A little boy played in muddy waters And that became his name Oh, two cotton fields away, y'all 
lived a cat named Elmo James. He too had the affliction all called Mrs. Bandu. All like a cat on a hot tin roof. Came big bad howling wolf. And a guy that could ride a reed. Talking about Jimmy Reed. Tell y'all he had the affliction. All called Mississippi Blue. Oh, I've got those 
Mississippi Mississippi Blue. I got a bad two people. Oh. All right, you're listening to WHFR Dearborn. We're going to get into some local music again. Thanks again for coming down, Billy. We really appreciate it. Thank you so very much. Thank you for having me. All right, you take care, my friend. Uh, thank you so much. Good looking women and for a lot of sexy women. Oh, for four, Janetta. 